Okay, here we go. Hi guys. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Kenna, and this is our summertime feel-good flow. And I've been wanting to film some online classes, some yoga classes for you guys, anyone interested, my friends, family, students, followers. So here you go. I finally found some time to work this summer and create these for you. So this is the first one. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to be doing the practice and guiding you at the same time. So I hope you enjoy. It's an all levels flow. Um, many levels of modifications into the journey of any expression of these postures. So feel free to practice as you need, support yourself as you need. Uh, I wanted to share my Yogi Tea message that I have for my Chai Green. Mm, life is a love of, life is a flow of love, excuse me. Your participation is requested. So here I am participating in the flow of love. I also have my grapefruit Young Living Essential Oil for which I'm a distributor. That's gonna help energize me and get me ready for this practice today. So a little bit on the wrists, on the neck. You can use a carrier oil. You don't have to use a carrier oil. I kind of rarely do for classes. Cheers, enjoy. This class will begin in a child's pose, but before we actually make our way into that child's pose, let's just take a seat. Knees can be open, big toes connected. And just ground into your center. Feel your pelvis connect downward into the earth. You might even tilt it forward and back, rocking anterior, posterior, for a few breaths as you settle in and find your space. You can close the eyes. Activating a deep breath from the belly. Diaphragm. Come into the backs of the ribs, the back of the heart, and then breath streaming into the third eye. To release back down to the base of the pelvis, where you contract and hug up and inward. Bottom of the exhale, Mula and Uliana Banda come alive. Inhale, reach the arms all the way out and up. Reach to a prayer overhead. Exhale, sweep the arms back down to the earth. Inhale. Posture of Surrender Balasana, Utita Balasana, Extended Child's Pose. So reach the hands forward and bow the head and breathe here for several minutes, however long you need to ground and find your inner stillness and quiet. Relax into the mat.
established a nice deep ujjayi rhythm of breath there in your child's pose. Rise to tabletop position. Stacking the bones, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. Inhale, release the belly downward to arch the spine, open the heart, draw the shoulders back. Exhale, round the spine into the reverse wave, hollow out, head heavy. Inhale, arch the spine. Cow bones, collarbones wide. Exhale, reverse into cat pose. A few more rounds. Stay connected to the mat through the space between thumb and index finger. Actively drag the mat back and forward under the hands. Sinking with the pulse of the spine. Return to neutral. Pull the Lower corners of the ribs down and in. Navel to the spine, the back of the waistline lifts up. Draw the knees together and send the right leg back in space. Level hips, inner red thigh spirals up. Left arm extends forward. Before you pulse, hug your right hand and your left knee down and in toward one another on the diagonal. You feel the cross lateral balance mechanism activating the body. Keep it, strong press into the right hand. Active all through the extended leg, inhale. And exhale, draw elbow to knee. Inhale, extend, lengthen. Exhale, elbow to knee. Firing up some core heat, inhale. Exhale. Do one more. Take the hand below the knee and pull it up a little higher as you release the head down a little lower. Forehead to touch. Release. Take a cat cow to release any static energy in the body. Same thing, left side. Find the straight line of energy in the body. Left heel all the way out through right fingertips. Cross lateral balance mechanism. Check. Breathe. Always find, nice to find the origin of the postures before we move. Exhale, pull it in. Inhale, extend. Exhale, pull it in. Continue with the breath. And take the hand below the knee, draw it up. And release. Toe crunch pose. Ever too much in the body, you can just simply sit back onto the heels. This is a really nice way to open up the fascia connective tissue on the bottom of the feet and then to really open all the way up through our back body as well. Turn this back into your breathing, your long, tall spine is the central channel of the body through which energy flows up and down with prana on the inhale, apana on the exhale. The shoulder head slightly float up and back so the side bodies remain long. The chest open and the head floating right on top of the spine. So we'll just take our hands down to the sides and start to twirl the wrists. We can go 
once or twice in one direction, and then switch it up. And let your head roll to the right, down through center, to the left, down through center, to the right. A few more times. Just find your own pace. Rise up, hands in a comfortable position on the legs. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, draw the shoulder heads back. Keep the trapezius, these big muscles here, elevated. They'll act like a shelf for the back of your head as you open the throat. And turn it into a little more of a back bend, a couple more breaths. Let the head drop back like that. And just very simply open the chest and lengthen through the back of the neck. And maybe the gaze isn't very high at all. It's a little more forward, slightly lifted. That's fine. Good. Release. I'm sure you're ready to release the toes after that much time. Come into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Hands forward, outer shoulder width distance apart, feet back, outer hips width distance apart. Create some movement to ease your way in. tricky one to find. It's a balance of opening up the hamstrings, the backs of the thighs, of pulling the belly in to maintain the length through the spine, openness through the shoulders and chest. Core stays drawn in, like the corset on your lower ribs pulled in. All ten fingertips claw the mat. Activate the arms, activate the legs. And breathe. Inhale, lift the heels up high. Exhale, send the knees, chest, chin to the mat. So the gaze draws forward, the elbows pull in and back as you lower with tons of control. Chest lands first, then chin, belly stays lifted, and then inhale, come forward onto the belly, and send the toes back. Activate the legs, draw the tail into the heels, interlace the hands behind the back. Right about where the sacrum is, you want to find that area and create space and length there. So tailbone back, inner thighs up. Inhale, hug the shoulder heads together, and as if someone's lightly lifting your hands up and back, lift your heart. Lift your chest. Breathe. To open up here in a variation of Cobra Bhujangasana. One more full breath. to the sides of the chest and tuck the toes. Find space in the back body, especially at the back of the waistline. You'll pull the core in, hug the elbows and shoulders in. Inhale, press up to modified plank. And exhale, downward facing dog. Deep full body breaths here. Take it up 
to the top of the mat. You can walk your way on this first round. Feet stay hips width, outer edges of the feet parallel. And strengthen and lift all through the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Coming up flat back, inner thighs back. Exhale, forward fold. Again, inhale, lengthen. And exhale to forward fold. We'll do one more round. Notice how I really pulled my shoulder blades back into their sockets. And bite the back of the neck to lengthen. And exhale, forward fold. Slowly bend the knees, pull the abdomen in, roll the body up. So you end up standing in Tadasana, mountain posture. Line the body up, feel the root, the tailbone, draw down. And the low belly, lift and tone up and in. Take a moment to breathe. And feel your own two feet planted through all four corners. Bend the knees, sit low to the hips. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Chair pose, Utkatasana. So we'll maintain the knees level. You can always use a block if you're practicing this at home. Squeeze it between the thighs and that will help you maintain symmetry between the knees, right and left. Here we pulse, inhale. Exhale, sweep the right arm forward, down, back. Left arm reaches forward as you find a twist in your chair. Inhale, sweep arms back up. Exhale, left arm forward, down, back, right arm forward. And inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, open, twisting right in your chair. Exhale, open, twisting left. We'll continue a few more rounds. Find your beat. Invite your body to go a little deeper into chair pose. Creating fire in the thighs. Glutes. Last round. Keep the lower abdominals active. Hold it in your chair, breathe here. Inhale, extend, reach the body up. Plant the feet down. Exhale to forward fold, hinging from hips. Inhale to a flat back. Halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. And here we'll come into plank pose. Shoulders over wrists. Legs active and strong. Now you can always take your knees down to the mat here to help you. And take some pressure out of the shoulders. Could be a really nice choice to make. Otherwise, keep the legs strong. Really push the mat away from you. Gaze forward, inhale. Exhale, slowly lower all the way. So elbows draw in and back from the low down. And the heart stays open. Let's take another cobra pose. Inhale. Use your hands to pull the mat back, send the heart forward. Exhale. Take the hands to the low rib cage. Inhale, rise up. You bypass cobra. To lift all the way up dog. Thighs off the mat. Press in the tops of the feet. Breathe. Big inhale. Exhale. Lift the hips. And roll over the toes. Back 
to down dog. Breathe here. So as you can tell, it can be challenging as a teacher to be practicing and breathing and talking all at the same time. So just know as I need moments to back off and breathe and rest, so may you. So please feel free to take them whenever you need. You can always replace downward dog with child's pose or even lying on your back, Shavasana style, or even just seated upright, meditative. So take care of yourself as there will be some pretty fiery, challenging moments in this flow. Nothing too crazy yet, but just wanna make sure you're keeping it safe, keeping it real. Okay, we're in down dog. Inhale, send the right leg up. Hips stay level, ribs in, shoulders on the back. Exhale, step it through. Take your time to scissor hug the inner thighs together, get a really stable base, and then press yourself up into a high lunge. We'll make it a crescent lunge once the arms reach overhead. But for now, find stability. And where your eyes go matters. Find a spot to focus on when that's completely or at least relatively still. You really tack your vision for support and balance. At one point, we call this drishti. Inhale. Crescent moon shape of the body. So the tops of the hip bones or the fronts of the pelvis pull up. The lower ribs draw down. It all pulls in and back. Tailbone lengthens toward earth. And the whole body deepens. Even as the upper body continues to lift, rise, lengthen, back leg powers up. Big right toe ball mound roots. Take one more full breath. Inhale, extend through the leg, find your control. Exhale, open the body to the left. So you're in a wide stance with feet parallel. Inhale, extend, engage legs. Exhale, tilt forward. We'll spend just a few breaths here in the first set. Prasarita Padottanasana. Let the upper body drape down with gravity. Inner thighs roll back. Do the inhale and lengthen the spine. Exhale, pivot to lunge. Plank pose. Gaze forward. We're going to keep the shoulder heads back and a little bit lifted to exhale lower. Chakudrangarangasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg. Keep the hands steady. Exhale to lunge. So establish a solid foundation, first and foremost, that happens in your feet, your legs, your pelvis. And try to stay connected into your center, in the front, on the back, on the right, on the left, and all around. 360 degrees, we're not just working in four planes, six planes. We're really working multidimensionally. So on this side, we'll do something a little different. Inhale, reach up. And then exhale, take the hands back to interlace at the back of the head, the occiput, the indentation on the lower back part of the skull. And you'll have your opposite thumb on the outside as you did in your cobra shoulder stretch. Pull the shoulders back, elbows forward, and use your hands to help you lengthen 
Really engage with the skull loop. As you breathe into this crescent lunge, the lift through the thoracic spine, backs of the ribs. One more breath. Inhale, reach up, extend, find your control to help you easily exhale and shift side. Second set here, Prasarita Padottanasana. Exhale to lower. So we'll skip inversions at this point. This can be a nice place to play into some inversions. But we'll leave that for further instruction down the road. Just enjoy the stretch all through the legs and the hips and the spine. Get even deeper into your ujjayi pranayam breath. You can hear me doing the oceanic rhythmic, Darth Vader-like sounding breath. Inhale, extend the spine. Exhale, pivot. So ready for Chaturanga Dandasana. Any variation you need. Katasana, chair pose. Inhale, stand tall, reach for the stars, root into the earth, and exhale. Samastitihi, standing in sameness, having inner composure. When all else on the outside may feel chaotically composed. You always have your breath to return to, to find presence and steadiness there. In each wave of inhale, exhale. So maintaining the connection, bring the feet together. We get toward the top of the mat. Inhale, send the arms overhead. Exhale, bring the right arm under the left. Wrap twist, Garudasana. The modification here is to hold opposite shoulders. Wherever you're at, find chair in the legs. Inhale, right knee up. Exhale, wrap. Option to twist or simply let the toes hang or come down toward the floor like a little kickstand of support. Line the joints up, ankles, knees, elbows, wrists. See if you can get upright in the spine by activating the core, the bandhas, the lifting and toning from pelvic floor through abdominals, even all the way up through heart, back of the skull. Sit a little deeper, and inhale, reach the arms up, right knee up, just find the steadiness. Exhale, step all the way back as long as you can to lunge, and then open the body smoothly out to the side, so you're prepped warrior two, Virabhadrasana, the left heel, bisects the arch of the right foot or it lines up with the right heel for more space. Notice 
notice that my torso is centered, pelvis fairly even, left knee over left ankle so I can see the big toe when I gaze down. I'll find the strength all through the legs to hug into the core of the pelvis, like you're scrunching your mat up, and then stretch them out apart. All at the same time, moving in opposing directions, build the dynamic heat. Inhale, reverse. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hinge the hips to come diagonal. Lay the form to the thigh. So probably this left thigh is burning right about now. At least I know mine is. So I'm going to send the hips back, back off the lunge a little bit and really fill out the back of my waist, waistline with my core strength. This is where I tend to always lose my posture. I go into my natural sway back. So connecting into my core, into my breath, into my center and bundas is really helpful for each posture. Maybe it's helpful for you too. Maybe you're the type of person who needs to sway your back more, like my husband, <laughs> and send your booty back. So just know that different paths for different folks. You have to feel into your body what's best. Just let me be your guide, but ultimately really listen for yourself. So hips back, upper body forward. You can get some fullness going there through the back. Then draw the left sit bone under, lengthen the tailbone toward the back heel. This back thigh inner spirals. The heart opens up. Inhale, slice the right arm forward to draw over. Exhale, draw it back. Half bind, catch the inner left thigh if it's available or do your best. And breathe into this half bound, extended side angle posture variation. Parshva Konasana. Breathe. Exhale, release. Draw the back heel up. Bring the foot just a little bit more forward so you can inhale, lengthen the legs out. And exhale, draw the back heel downward as you fold. Inhale, lengthen. Pyramid variation. Parasvottanasana. Breathe into the hamstring. Forward, exhale, step, walk, or float, top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, chair. Inhale, stand tall. Exhale, samasthiti. Left side, we'll do it a little more quietly. So just find the rhythm and flow with your breath. Garundasana, start with the arms, left arm under. Chair, left knee up, and wrap to your desired variation. Work the drishti gaze at one point. Sit onto the stool of the right thigh so you can be pretty upright in the spine. Inhale, extend. Exhale. 
exhale, send it back to a nice long lunge and open. Warrior two, take your time to find the posture that works for you and breathe. Remember, it's just a feel-good summer flow. So that's our main intention today. It's to feel good in the body, build some natural heat that aligns with the season, vitality and energy. Just want to feel alive. So get out of your head, into your breath, into your body the temple in which you are worshiping right now. Inhale, reverse. And stay lifted through both sides of the body and avoid collapse. Inhale, come up. Exhale, find the hinge, the prep for lateral angle. So we'll tilt forward in the upper body. Sweep the hips back. Find the strength and the fullness all through here. So the abdominals activate to create that. And then right sit bone under, tailbone toward back heel. Deepen. Inner left thigh spirals back and down. Full breaths. And add the arm when you're ready. Chaturangarandasana. Walk halfway up and then take the hands halfway back. Hang your body in a ragdoll variation of Uttanasana for a few breaths. You can garner some strength back. It's nice to shake the head no, not a yes. You tend to build a lot of tension in the neck, in the jaw, in the throat. So when you can, release even the lips. And the tongue. Take a squat, turn the toes out, and lower the pelvis down. If the heels are lifted, you can take the feet a little wider, or you can always try rolling up your mat to give your heels a little boost. Find the breath, and embrace the natural curve through your low spine in this posture. Energetically hug in, even as the elbows press the knees out. Take 
two more breaths here. You can always choose to stay a bit longer. Otherwise, plant the hands with really solid form, so starfish hands, all ten fingers actively press into the mat. Lift the hips parallel the feet. Bend the knees so you can perch onto your tiptoes. You want to keep the hips lifted. The gaze more forward as you draw knees into armpits. At least that's what it feels like at first, but when you tip the weight forward onto the hands, then really it's more that your knees are on the backs of your upper arms. And you can play here with crow pose vakasana. Think about lifting up. Belly in. Breath flowing. Big toes together, heels up to sits bones, and release when you're ready to forward fold and breathe. Welcome to stay longer here and challenge your balance. Just for the sake of this video and timing, we're going to come out, take a breath, and switch sides. Of course, I want to jam it all into this first video session, but I realize I gotta, gotta keep it tight, keep it clean, especially for this first one. And then you all are welcome to give me feedback and make requests and suggestions for future videos. Breathe. Feel your foot and your leg pressing one into the other, vacuuming into the central channel, all the way up the spine, out through the hands. Remember the corset on your ribs, the fullness of the back of the waist. And exhale, gently release. Inhale, send the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, lower down to the knees. Open the feet. Take your hands to the flesh of your calves. Draw them back and sit your pelvis. Often we sit on a block if we can't come all the way down to the mat. And then lean back so you start to get front body opening, not only through the chest, but as well through the thighs, and the more that you lengthen the tailbone forward to the knees, or even come down to the forearms, or even the upper back, 
This will help to increase the stretch in the fronts of the thighs, but we want to make sure the knees stay grounded and together, hip width distance or even closer. If this is not a good quad stretch for you or you have some knee issues preventing you from practicing this, you can always just stand and do a simple quad stretch by reaching your hand back to the top of your foot with a bent leg. And in future videos, of course, we'll explore many quad and hip flexor stretches. Apart from this here, Varasana, for now, breathe. into the sensation with your awareness of your blood flow being cut off at the knees and how that feels tingly energy all the way down your lower legs ankles and feet and toes the beauty is that when we release the posture blood flows and streams in lots of power and energy and that action all together really helps to open and strengthen and clear out the joints. So we like that. Take a deep breath. And exhale lower down. And give yourself some knee support. Kneel up. Another great posture you can practice squeezing the block between the thighs. Use your hands to help you feel into your pelvis and how grounded it is. Now, it's not that we're thrusting the pelvis forward when we practice this coming posture. We're embracing this natural bit of curve, but we're grounding down, in particular through the tailbone and the pelvis and the leg bones in general, down into the mat. So we can really find the lift and the opening from this more middle part of the spine, rather than the lower. So inhale, lift through the heart, hug the elbows, shoulders, and back. Exhale, feel your hands assist you in grounding the hips as you start to arch the spine back. This is a nice place to stay, or eventually you can have even toes tucked here to make the heels a little more accessible. Otherwise, tops of the feet firmly rooted as the hands come back, fingertips to heels. And then you can really start to expand the chest as you have some leverage here to lean forward for full Ustrasana, camel pose. Here's that same idea of keeping the shoulders and the trapezius lifted as a little shelf for the back of the skull. Inner thighs back, tailbone long. Breathe into the heart. One hand comes to support you, find a little lift from the other hand to support you. And release camel pose. Always nice to be still and feel any energy that moves or shifts around your heart after. And also just to let the blood flow back down and gravity ground your energy into the mat again. Take a seat. Time to open the hips and heading into the cool down of our practice. So this next posture, Gomukhasana, can be done half style with just the right knee on top of the left. You can also elevate the pelvis under a blanket to help. Or you can go full style, Gomukhasana. So it's a hip opener. 
here. Both hips are grounded even on the mat. Use your hands to help you manually inner rotate the top thighs. Some of that skin and tissue likes to get stuck there. Use the hands to pull the ankles apart. Big inhale, lengthen, lift, open. Exhale, start to drape down. Continue to pull the ankles apart in this forward fold until you feel ready to release. You can place your head on a block here. You can place them on your hands. You can make two fists. take a lot of time and patience and love and compassion on their journey of opening and releasing so I really invite you to take your time with this and feel into it perhaps longer than I'm guiding you here on the video Reach the arms up. We activate the outer edges of the feet into the mat. Exhale to the right. So we incorporate a side stretch into our hip opener. We plug the outer left hip down into the mat. Wrap the shoulders back. And gaze where it feels nice on the neck. Freeing in the heart. legs. So the same little tactic here. We use the hands to inner rotate just some of the flesh and tissue of the top thigh out of the way. So we can really plug the left hip down. Pull the ankles apart. Activate through the feet. Big inhale. And exhale. Fold. When you're ready to really release into it, find a comfortable placement of the hands and the arms and the head and the block. And support from just yourself. Please feel free to stay longer in the hip opener as needed. Inhale, reach up, exhale, side stretch, Ingo Mukasana. Sit tall. 
tall. Activate the thigh strength. Activate the feet. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold the body over the legs. Pachimottanasana. Another inhale to broaden the collarbones. Exhale, maintain an open heart even as you forward fold. forward so you have space to lie on the back. This is a nice time to do just a little bit of free flow. Any last closing postures or stretches that would be beneficial to your body and your practice today. I'm intuitively feeling happy baby. Or even a supine twist. yourself time to explore and creatively close out your practice until you ultimately really meet the needs of your unique specific body and mind and heart today. As you're ready, we'll extend your legs long and forward. Your palms open at your sides for Shavasana. So the most important thing here in your Shavasana is that you just simply remain comfortable. So if that means putting a bolster under your knees or under your back or a little pillow or towel under your head, it's definitely worth it to get a good three to five to seven, even ten minutes of pure relaxation and integration. So I'm going to stop the video here so you just have pure peace and quiet for your final Shavasana and to save time as well. But I wanted to thank you for practicing with me. I wanted to thank Toe Socks for helping me stick to my practice and stick to my mat. And um, please tune into the next offering that I share. Namaste.